time with Herman and Sharon. All right, let's. I love that little voice. Le yeah, I know. It's time. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's my little. And it wakes you up in the my, morning. It's my little <laughs> floor director, Brooke. I know it is. I know it is. I, isn't it interesting? I, was, I, th I don't know if you were watching with me, but uh, this guy, there was kind of a panel on one of the major networks, and they were, they were explaining because accusations now become fact. In other words, you make an accusation, you don't have to prove it. Right. It used right. to be you, accusation, you go to court or whatever, or you have two or three witnesses and say that actually happened. But this guy was talking about, they were saying, what are you going to do with your sons when they have something like that happen to him? And this, this one guy, I thought, I thought, I thought, I don't know where he's coming from, but he must have little kids and he has no clue. But he said, oh, I'm going to teach my son uh, that you don't do anything, uh, make sure you're, you're polite to everybody and you treat them. Uh, every place you go, you realize that you have to be on guard and so that there's never, when you grow up, there's never anything anybody can say about you or question your motives. Well, how old is he, about six months? <laughs> yeah, no, but, I'm, but this is a dad talking about, yeah, no, he's teaching, dad. and I'm thinking to myself, my goodness, I'd love to, I'd love to talk to that father. I'm saying he's probably he, just a little kid because he hasn't gone through the teenage years with him yet. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'd love to go back to him and, and when he's about 16 and say, how's, how's that working out? Yeah, really. I mean, it is amazing that, yeah, and, and of course they're coming against a guy that, you know, that they call him the, the altar boy or the, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Kavanaugh. <laughs> and, and I mean, you couldn't be any more squeaky clean than this guy. And and he's still in trouble. So it's just, but well, this guy has got a, a formula that he's gonna use that that will never happen to his son. Isn't well, that amazing? I hope, it, I hope he's right. Yeah, I do too. But I don't think so, but we, anyway. We have a brilliant, and I say that with all candor <laughs> and truthfulness. His name is Lon Ray Samoran, and his latest book, Seize Your Moment, and it is laid out so amazing, and we're going to yeah. cover as much of it as I can, but I Wonderful encourage guy. you, when you see it on the screen and the website, order your copy, Unmasking Everyday Opportunities. And I, I love I love motivational type, but scripturally based That's right. books. Exactly. So let's invite to the set Lon Ray Samoran. And Here he comes. is born <laughs> and raised in England, London, born. right? Born in England. Yeah, born yes. in England, but raised <laughs> in Nigeria, right? Raised in Nigeria. <laughs> yes. And right. How many PhDs do you have? <laughs> Just one MD. <laughs> <laughs> Medical doctor. <laughs> yes. And you're a Psychiat psychiatrist. Psych psychiatrist. It's, yes. uh, psychi uh, psychiatrists have to have an MD? Yes, you have to have a, be a physician first. Wow. Yeah, so ha have a seat. Thank you so what much. A, what an honor you. to have you. Thank it you really so is. Thank you. Great book. Thank Great you book. Much. Let me tell you. Just a little about him is a board certified psychiatrist specializing in addiction psychiatry mm -hmm. and has been practicing since 19, I always get, I get a charge out of practicing. So, <laughs> so let me practice on you. Okay, it's, like, it's got that term, it always gets me, I have to laugh at it. Uh, <clears throat> he has owned and operated an outpatient substance abuse rehab facility and been a clinical consultant to the Army Substance Abuse Clinic in West Point. Wow, Whew. that's wonderful. I mean, for West Point to allow you in, you better show your <laughs> credentials. Uh, and that's West Point, New York. He is also an associate pastor. His mission is to help people discover hope and to live purposeful lives. Boy, you have, mm -hmm. you could pull yourself up a little closer there okay. so I can, I can get close to you if I have to reach you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Great to have, it really, it's, I, 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 we can't always show you what I read, but, but these books are amazing. But yes. he has, uh, he has 31, if you would kind of break them down as chapters, but he calls them uh, 
key one, key two, key three, key four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I, I studied at least 11 of them. So, <laughs> so we're never going to get through that many. Right. But there's actually 31. Right. And, and so it, it, it's, it's, it's a book that, uh-oh, uh uh-oh. Linda forgot my napkins. <laughs> she, she's got 20 things she's got to write down just for me just bring them on bring them on don't don't fold them to nothing just just there you go because my nose for some odd reason in this thing hmm. uh and here you go you can have one too in case i get you crying <laughs> because you never know what i'm going to do i don't even know what i'm going to do but uh the, the first one is key one opportunity comes when you prepare, right. and obviously, and, you, and then I, I got these little phrases, because I, and, and by the way, when I'm only going to do bullet points, right. basically, but when you get the book, he has a whole yeah. paragraph after paragraph of what that particular comment and how to relate it to yourself and Can your I life. Think a little bit of his background first before cool, you honey. get into that. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You, were, you had said something in the green room. You were born in England. I was born in England, yes. I was born in, in England. My parents are from Nigeria, so I was raised in Nigeria. Um, I um, went to medical school in, in Nigeria. I uh, graduated from medical school at the age of 21. Wow. Yeah. Do, do, your mom and dad are. are <laughs> did, did did you get their genetic <laughs> gray matter? Hopefully. I mean, were they? I mean, were yeah. They well, academic? my dad. My dad was. Uh, my dad is an accountant. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, my mom worked uh, doing some uh, work in a petroleum company. Wow. So yeah, why did, why did you decide you wanted to get into medicine? Um, well, in Nigeria, you know, there at least growing up, there were you know kind of like several main things that people will will go into whether it's um, accountancy medicine engineering th those those were the pop the right. popular um, it wasn't very expensive as it is here to go to medical school so that's a big difference really um, so all you have to do is if you're smart enough you can get into med into medical school it wasn't really you don't, you don't have to get into debt no yeah you don't have to get into that much debt to go into so why psychiatry school. So that's a good good question. So um, I didn't have much interest in psychiatry when I went to medical school. Um, after I left Nigeria, I went to England to practice because I wanted to come over to the States because, you oh, know, okay. I just felt that God wanted, wanted me here. So a f I called a friend of mine um, and I said, listen, I feel led to go to the States, but I want to work in England for a while since, you know, I'm born in England. I can practice here. Yeah. Um, what do you think I should do? He says, well, go do psych psychiatry. They don't work so hard. <laughs> uh, you'll have plenty of time to study for your exams if you, if you go and do psychiatry. I was like, really? I was like, okay. So I ended up, you know, doing, just took a, a, a one week um, stint in psychiatry. And I began to talk to this lady who I think had just, was going through a divorce. And um, before, I mean, I, I got saved at the age of nine, so I've always been involved in Praise counseling God. people, wow. you know, and stuff like that. And as I started talking to her, I realized that a lot of the skills I was using, whether it was in church or in Bible study, in just helping people discover hope, helping people to recover purpose, just came natural to me in talking to her. After like about an hour, she, her affect changed, she, she looked better, she was more motivated, and you know, I felt short of just saying, are you ready now to accept Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior? And then I thought to myself, no, this is, this is psychiatry. This is not church, wow. you wow. know. Yeah. But the same skills were, were evident. So after doing that for a week, I thought, I don't believe get people get paid to do this. I'm switching from infectious diseases to psychiatry. So after that one month, um, I did that for like a month. And then I just love the fact that just counseling people, helping to instill hope, helping to know, let people know that there's more to life, you can be living a better tomorrow. A lot of the things that, you know, um, and then when I got into, you know, psychiatry, I realized that a lot of the things you require in helping somebody who, for instance, is suffering from alcohol addiction, a lot of things you require are things that you need for renewal of the mind as a Christian. There's such a crossover. The things you need to stay sober are the things you need to stay joyful. So that's kind of like how I ended up in addiction psychiatry because I feel like it's a lot of renewal of, of the mind and principles. That's like AA. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly.
Yeah. Wow. Now, how do you come up with this format? Because this is not a normal book. Right. You know, like normal books, chapter. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so on, so on, so on, chapter two, and so on, so on. Yeah. How, how did this follow? Um, so it, it kind of started off as a sermon that I preached in church Very back good. in 2000, and I think two, two, around 2011 or 2012. Do you like preaching? Yeah, I pre yeah, I, was, I still preach this past Sunday. Yeah, whenever, yeah, I, I preach very regularly, yeah. <laughs> and you go to one of the largest or the largest church? No, I was mentioning that the largest church is in, Ni Ni that's in Nigeria. Okay. The only church that I go to is, is Christ Alive in, okay. in, in, right. in the Bronx, pastored by Pastor Dean. Yeah, uh, he's here now. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, I know. And, and uh, boy, that had to yeah. be quite a, quite a transition from London to the Bronx. So, but your mother's involved in that huge church. Right, yes, yeah, yes. That's what I was my mother of, attends yeah. the church in Nigeria, yeah. How many, how many, how many, you said? Yeah, the last, I'm, I'm sure it's more than that now. They had at least 50,000 in the service. Can you imagine 50,000? <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean to tell you. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. So, so. Th their music must be mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> amazing. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So it started off as a sermon that I preached in, uh, in Christ Alive back in 2010. You know, the pastor, you know, very often when he's out, he asks me, you know, could you please m minister? Yeah. And, you know, I sought the Lord. I said, you know, what would you like me just to minister on? And he began to open my eyes to Jeremiah 29, talking about in verse 11 that the thoughts I have towards you are of good and of evil um, to, you know, to, to, to bring you to an expected end. Mm -hmm. But that what often stands in the way of that is opportunity. People not, not recognizing that the way that he provides for us very often is through opportunity. So I remember I was at work then and just God just began to drop in several points about that I should talk about during that sermon, that these are ways in which um, people can help to recognize opportunities. Is and I just began to write them down. Is addiction consistent with certain personalities? Not, not, not necessarily. You know, certain personalities or certain coping styles may lend itself towards trying to use alcohol to or drugs to medicate. But there's a very heavy genetic aspect to addiction. Um, you know, as opposed to just the personality, um, especially when you're talking of addiction as a disease, as opposed to just occasionally drinking or whatever. You know. It's, it's very heavily genetic. Um, mm. Is addiction connected to a specific part of your brain? Yes, yes, absolutely. There have been studies regarding that in terms of just looking at the um, effect of, um, you know, even when you look at rats, for instance, and you expose them to, um, you know, cocaine or, you, you know, they would give up food, they would give up family they would give up you know every they would they, they would give up everything just to keep hitting that lever to um, get more cocaine to the point where they will actually die you know so wow. um, and that's yeah. consistent with humans yep. it's consistent with um, humans so there's a strong genetic component to it that's why a lot of the medications for it are geared towards hitting certain aspects of the brain that would help in you know reducing the uh, cravings. And so if you hadn't that. gone into psychiatry, you were going to do what you said? I was going to do just, uh, you know, internal medicine or really? infectious diseases. Yes. As a matter of fact, my applications to this United States had already, to the hospitals here, were initially for internal medicine and to specialize in infectious diseases. Because, you know, my hope was, you know, um, that was what I had planned to do. I had no interest in psychiatry when I was in medical school. My it was until that experience in England, mm -hmm. uh, because you know, it, growing up, you know, in, in medical school, there was, um, you know, I saw more of severe mental illness. Yeah. Um, getting over to England is where you saw people who were just a little sad, a little depressed, going through family stress. Yeah. You know, um, so that kind of exposed me to a, a bigger aspect of of psychiatry. Key number one: opportunity comes when you prepare. And and these little quips, by the way, this is just. I just pulled things out of his <laughs> writing. Uh, stop having a short-term vision for your life. So opportunity comes when you prepare. And we do that, don't we? When we mm -hmm. you, you say, stop having a short-term vision for your life. Right. 
So people just kind of make little easy things. Exactly. And then and then blame themselves for not being like somebody else that does all of this great stuff. Right. You know, I mean, we we we're surrounded by so much opportunities, but the you know, opp opportunities is is almost like, you know, taking a particular bus. There is a route the bus takes, but you need to be at the right place at the right time. And you preparing for that helps you to recognize when it when it actually comes. You know, if you don't prepare, you're not going to recognize it. So if you're just living day to day, you're not going to recognize opportunity. And well, that is great. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, there's a lot of you know in the book there talking about when people kind of like just looked at their lives and they realized, you know what, I can't keep doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. whether it's the prodigal son. Yeah. You know, after he went and spent all his money on riotous living. Yeah and he found himself feeding pigs, you know, and you know, the Bible talks about how he came to himself and he says, what, what am I doing here? Why am I feeding pigs? You know, he could have stayed with the day to day and just say, well, at least it's paying the bills, you know, but he thought to himself like, oh, I should stop thinking short term, I need to think long term. So he came to himself and says, why am I sitting here feeding pigs when my father is there and he has, and even the servants are living better than I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So very often, God begins a change by dropping the right question into your heart. It's just a just a question. It's like, why why am I here feeding pigs? And it, that just led to a series I of. I love events. that. Just a question. Just yeah. a question. Yeah. And, and now, it, it, key number two. I, yeah. I I like the way this is written because it's 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 the kind of book that when you put it down, you have something to work toward. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it isn't just gone away. Oh, it's a nice book I read. Mm -hmm. And like this, key two, opportunity comes when you gain understanding and wisdom. Right. And then you say, th th these are those things I pull out when I'm reading the whole thing. Wisdom helps you know what season you are in. Right. Hmm. Opportunity comes when you gain understanding and wisdom. So. Everybody always, I'm sure, looked at you and said, boy, boy you're just lucky. Right. But you prepared absolutely. for what you have today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, the, 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 the earlier you recognize, you know, it's not too early to begin to plan for your future. You know, sometimes, you know, you see, I mean, I, I'm, I'm married. I have, uh, I've been married for about 25 years. I have a 19-year-old um, and a 14-year-old. Oh. Um, so you so know. Did, did they turn out with all of your teaching, <laughs> all of your explaining? I knew that was coming. Did you, did you get to that point where you just said, did you hear anything I said? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, thank God. I mean, I'm, I'm very happily married to my wife, Sade. We actually lead. What's the, her name? Sade. Sade. Like the singer. I love you. I mean, yeah. <laughs> your names are like an expensive restaurant. It's like, <laughs> I mean, That's funny. But, so, and, yeah, we lead the couples ministry in my church. Wow. Uh, That's yeah, great. My, my wife and I, my son is in Stony Brook doing uh, pre med. Um, yeah, That's he's doing. A, so they a got major, dad's brains. <laughs> he's doing a major in biochemistry. Goodness. Uh, in uh, in uh, Stony Brook University. Are all the people in Nigeria extremely? <laughs> if you were to give them a <laughs> test on IQ, oh. would they be very smart? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Ni 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 Nigerians have, uh, ex and I'm not just saying that because I'm in Nigeria. Nigerians are very, very smart. In terms of doctors, lawyers, they are extremely so. G so God just said, "You know what? I love <laughs> yeah, these people." Bam! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. give you. I'm going to give yeah. you like Solomon. Exactly. Boom. Yeah. And my daughter, she's 14. She's in her first year of um, high school. Wow. And uh, she wants to be a pediatrician. Um, but one one thing I tell them, and maybe part of this is, you know, when I got saved so early, I think one of the things God really impressed on me is having a sense of purpose. And I like to tell, especially the young folks, that it's not too early to begin to think about your future. You know, yeah. very often people want to live through the ages of, you know, 16 to 24 as if that's a rough draft. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, that's real life. I was a physician at 21. So when people are just like, well, I don't know what to do. I'm still, you know, God wants to give you a sense of purpose so that you can know um, you know, what he has in store for you. Were you so, goal-oriented? Uh, very, very much so. Very, very much so. Yeah. 
and you know. Uh, so did you get this from your parents to start out as young as you did? Um, in terms of, I th my parents definitely he were very helpful in the whole process. I yeah. think for me, it's getting saved so early and getting okay. exposed to the Word of God, getting exposed to the teachings oh, of so right. um, Kenneth, right. Kenneth, Kenneth, Kenneth Hagan. You know, I got exposed to that teaching right, right from t when I was in school. You're so right. Yeah. So, you know, we were, you know, and I was surrounded by other Christians that were using biblical truths for intellectual prosperity. That was what the whole thing was, that as a Christian, you intellectual have to be prosperity. prosperity. Yeah, as a Christian, we the, 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 what we're teaching people is you have to be the top of your class. You can't be a Christian and have a testimony and be the lowest and be scoring oh, low that's, that's grades. Right. We nice. don't hear that anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, you know yeah. Uh, you, so. you could be a motivational teacher, too. <laughs> Go across the country. Yeah, you could be in the school. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. You know, because, you know, the Bible talks in, I, I think it's in Job. It says that in Job 30, 36, I believe. It says that, there is a spirit in man, and that the inspiration of the Almighty gives them understanding. Wow. So intellectual prosperity and inspiration from the Holy Spirit, they go hand in hand. Yeah. God has, God is the best psychiatrist there is. That'd be, that'd be a great <laughs> title for your next book. Right. <laughs> intellectual prosperity. prosperity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As a matter of, you know, when I was in medical school, a friend of mine wrote a book in that, in that respect, and that really helped me a lot, you know, but yeah. Uh -huh. And so that, that caught on to me very early in terms of just seeing, you know, whether it was Daniel, the way he excelled, the way Daniel oh, excelled. Great example. Exactly. You know, you know, Daniel, for him to minister to the people that he was able to minister to, he had to be amongst the intellectuals. Absolutely. You know, he wasn't amongst those who were not smart. He was amongst those, you had to be intellectual, you had to be smart to be in that setting mm -hmm. with, with, with the kings and then be able to minister to them. So the intellectuals need, they need someone, oh you know, who's smart. You, you wouldn't even be in their presence if you were not smart, yes, you yes. know? So uh, it, it, the, the Bible has, you know. Yeah, that's right. Key three, Sharon. Opportunity comes in the midst of adversity. Yes. And, and, you, and this is another one I picked out of the whole paragraph. If you are focused on problems, then you will not recognize opportunity. Yes, absolutely. You know, one good example for that, if you look at the children of, of Israel when they were meant to possess the, the promised land. You know, God gave them details about what was in the promised land, but he, he didn't tell them about the giants there. So they got there, they saw the giants, they were all excited. They, they saw the giants, but they were like, no, this cannot be <laughs> right. our promised land, you know. But, you know, those giants were opportunities. There were, that it was an opportunity for God to show his greatness. But, you know, one of the things I say in the book is don't walk past your promised land because you don't like the entrance. Ooh, right? Because, you know, the entrance, there were like certain giants, and very often God brings certain things our way, and we're like, oh, no, this cannot be our promised land. We would rather go around and walk in the wilderness for another 40 years looking for a promised land without giants. But, you know, I, I, and I taught about that actually this past Sunday, that, you know, God, our, you know, whatever promised land you have, there are tenants there. So you just have to go and evict them. <laughs> Boy, that, and that's exactly, that was the principle. Yes, exactly. You, you have used. to go, yeah, ex exactly. You have to, yeah, so, do, you know, you don't walk, walk past your promised land because you don't like the entrance. There will always be, and you know, very, very often when we see the promised land and we see the giants, the giant, you know, it just, you know, creates fear, you sure. know, a we lot focus of times. On we the, focus on the, on the fear. We, we focus on the object. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, one of the things God even opened my eyes to, which I put in the book, is that your victory is on the other side of your fear. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, while... I'd like to have you on <laughs> about a week. <laughs> and then I'd probably say two weeks. But the, I mean, it really is, it, I, I, I just love your... It's good to you know, get that in your head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, you know, and, you know, you know, giants are only there waiting for you to regroup. They're only there for as long as you, wow. you know, you're, you know, that is, you know, when, w you know, whenever God wants you to possess something, there's always a dispossessing that takes place. Now, you know, we're not just talking of physical giants, you know, when, when God wants you to take a step into a new season, you have to deal with giants of fear, discouragement, disc you know, things that, you know, past failures, 
you know, just being uncomfortable. You've been in the same place, doing the same thing for so many years. You've been in that profession for 20 years, and God is saying, it's time for a new season. You're like, well, I can't leave Sally I'm here. I'm comfortable here. Sally and I did <laughs> orientation together yeah. in this company 20 years ago. Well, you know, I don't know, you know, I'm yeah. comfortable here, but, you know, would you rather stay in a place you know, with a guarantee of mediocrity, or are you willing to look at what God has in store for you? So, um, you're talking to somebody right now. Yes. I just feel led. That's your mm -hmm. camera right there. Okay. All right. Talk to them. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, you're at, at that place. You know that God is saying to you that it's time to make a move, but you feel fear. You feel like you know what's going to happen. There's that uncertainty, but I want to remind you of something that happened with the. With the, le with the lepers, you know. The um, Bible talks about that in, I believe, in Second Kings, where they looked behind them, there was famine. They, 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 they looked at where they were, and they knew that they were going to die if they stayed there. In front of them, there was possibility of life. And they, they asked themselves, why sit here until we die? Mm -hmm. And they decided to walk towards their promise. God is saying to you today that you should walk towards your promise. You may not know exactly what's going to happen or what is out there, but begin to move in that direction. Don't wait for all the lights to be green before you take the first step. Oh, that's good. You can only go through one green light at a time. So just keep moving. Don't sit there. Your victory is on the other side of your fear. That stuff is not going to kill you because the greater one lives on the inside of you. Oh. Amen. Man. Very good. <laughs> I mean, you know, my guess. Motivated that I, you too. My, my guess that I never meet. Once we meet them, you never know how they're going to turn out. <laughs> yeah. And many times out here, I go, "Wow, you know," but it's just like the the the, the these lepers and yep. you're, that you're just talking about. Yeah. And, and when they got to where they said, "Okay, we might as well take a chance. Yep. If if they're going to kill us, yep. we're going to die here anyway." So exactly. they get there, exactly. and God has scattered them all. They're yes. all gone, gold every place. Yeah. Every amount of food you can make. Yeah, exactly. And you know what I love? Yeah. They didn't say, we need all this for ourselves. Yes. They, they said, yeah. we can't just live here. We've got to go back. Exactly. And tell them. Yeah. That's what you, you have done in your, all yeah. your whole life. It's like, <laughs> I've got all of this. Yeah. i got to tell somebody yeah. about Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Yes. It is. Absolutely. It, you know, it, I, I'm telling you, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a motivational book, yeah. very spiritual because uh, it, which it did me, you go back and you go, what was that he was talking? And you go back and you read the verse. You go, he's got a study guide here. Too. Yes, and a study guide. <laughs> which That's is right. Great. Yeah, yeah. So you can go to that website and yeah. get the book, study guide. And let me tell you, this is the kind of book you really want to yeah. uh, dig deeper into what he has for you. So get your copy. You will be blessed like I was. Okay. <laughs> God bless you. Bye bye.